They never tell you about all of the big dumb mistakes that they made on purpose, but that's business. And frankly, that's life, that's parenting, that's fitness, that's dieting, that's relationships, that's everything. everything. Hey guys, this is the Money Hole Podcast. I'm Chris Lamb. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and download. And today I'm here with Ed Rush. What's up, Chris? Thanks for coming, man. Awesome, man. On a rainy day in Reading. We don't get rain this early. <laughs> this know. is like you, know. you witness something that's, I don't know if I've ever seen it. It's. I think it's supernatural. So there was fires all over the place that are, I'm sure, out by now. So <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah, we had a very wet year and I mean, we're all happy about it. This is crazy because for those of us that have been in Reading, uh, this is not what September looks like. Yeah. We usually have a, a lot of fires, but I want to talk to you, man. First of all, thank you so much for coming. I know you're here on a tight window and Fab put this together and I, uh, I've heard a lot about you. I've got the book here. God talks. We're going to talk a little bit about this, but you know, this podcast I was sharing with you, you know, we have a lot of different types of people that listen to it. And one of the things that we try to talk a lot about, especially with what's going on right now is people's money. Um, we, we, we want to have a holistic approach to it, right? Because I was in the mortgage business for a long time. I've been in coaching and you see how money runs to extremes inside the church, outside the church. Um, but right now people are really having to deal with money issues, maybe more than ever before. And you deal with entrepreneurs, you, you're, you're in coaching, you do a lot of different things. So what I'd love to hear is a little bit about your background, and then we're going to get to kind of what you're doing currently. How did you end up here today? Yeah. So, wow. That's like, you got a couple hours. Yeah. So I'll do the quick version. So first of all, thanks for having me on the show. It's awesome uh, to be here. The quick version is I failed kindergarten. That's important for you to know. Uh, not the sharpest tool in the shed. My daughter recently graduated from kindergarten, by the way, with honors. Um, nice. And at, at that moment, mixed with pride was sort of the sense of like, how dumb do you have to be to fail this, this grade? Right. Well, I ended up making it into the Marines, which actually isn't that hard. Did make it into flight school, graduated from light, from flight school. Turned out I was a pretty good pilot, made my way all the way through Top Gun. Like if you've seen the movie, you know, the actual school uh, that's based on the movie. And then at the end of my military career into the business world, been in business, writing books, speaking, consulting for about the last 15 years, wrote six books along the way. And a lot of, a lot of what I do now, especially is, advise business owners, bring wisdom into their business and help them. And so the issue of money is really important. And I can tell you right now, especially in our world right now, there's a lot of fear around yeah. money. There's an incredible amount of uncertainty. Yep. Um, without any equivocation, I can tell you that the government has completely manipulated the current system and there's only so long you can do that. And I think a lot of people recognize that, especially yeah. people um, who have wealth or people who want to attract wealth. And yeah. so- uh, fear's not my game. Uh, I am not a person who embraces fear in, in basically any way. I have a lot of hope, a lot of optimism, uh, a lot of uh, uh, of love surrounded by a sound mind, as a good author friend of ours once said. Um, and so I was looking to the future with hope and optimism, knowing that we can do the right things and you can, because fundamentally money is attracted to several things. Well, number one, money is attracted to speed. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to implement and adjust, money will be attracted to you. Money is attracted to people who don't hate it. Yeah. Um, or think it's evil. So for example, if you grew up thinking money's the root of all evil or, you know, money doesn't grow on trees or money's going to make you a bad person. Money, rich people are a-holes. Yeah. Like for example, yeah, I always tell people if, if a guy drives by in a Maserati and you say under your breath, what a jerk, you'll never own a Maserati. That's you know? true. <laughs> like you just so, never, so never, true. never will. So I like, I like talking about money with a very abundance mindset, yep. knowing that God created this beautiful world with a lot in it. And know that no matter what happens, you know, you can always adjust and overcome. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was, uh, my first couple of years in the mortgage business, there was a guy who actually had a degree back then in 2006, you could have been a dishwasher and a loan officer the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Because all you had to do was fog a mirror to get a loan, <laughs> which is part of the reason why 2008 Eight happened. happened. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. this guy, David, um, he actually had some, I think he had an MBA and he had e economic degrees. And I remember him telling me, and I'm fresh out of high school, like I, I just, I've been in the mortgage business since high school. He said, anytime that people are losing money, people are making money. Yeah. And so it was an early age for me where I realized, wait a minute, when the economy goes bad, it's not that the money disappeared. Yeah. It's just flowing somewhere else. Like, yeah. It's always there. 
Um, so help me make the connection between Top Gun and business consulting. I would love <laughs> to, because I'm sure there's a lot of transferable yeah. skills and disciplines, but I'd love to hear how that happened. Yeah. So the first, the, the short answer to the question is wasn't on purpose. Uh, almost every business success I had came on the tail of a, of 10 or 12 failures. It's mm-hmm. pretty much the story, as yep. you know. Uh, but yeah, I left the Marine Corps back in 2006. I stayed in the reserves. So I kept flying for a little while. Uh, and I started building businesses. So the very first business I built, like all my buddies were going off to fly for the airlines, mm-hmm. United, Delta, you know, JetBlue and and uh, Southwest. And I had actually put some applications in to fly for those airlines. And I'll never forget this. My wife and I are sitting on the couch watching a movie. She reaches over halfway through the movie, clicks the button off and goes, do you really want to do that? And the moment she asked that, I went, I don't, I don't think so. Mm. No. She knew me at that time better than I did. I'm not the kind of person that likes doing the same thing like two or three times. Mm-hmm. About the third time, I'm pretty much over with that thing. And and I don't know if you've been on an airplane recently, but like those pilots do the same thing all day, you know, every day, up, down, up, down, level off, talk on the radio. Uh, and, it, you know, it's fun the first few times. And so what I did was I built the first business I built. I, w- I would always get asked questions by younger guys, like, how do you get in the military and how do you be a pilot? So I wrote a book basically to answer that question. And I created these series of CDs because we were using CDs back mm-hmm. then. If, the, if you're watching, if you don't know what a CD is, it's a round metallic disc that you put inside of a machine like a, like a, like an, and it plays like a, you know, a, when you push your music on, on iTunes. So uh, I created these CDs and I created this business to teach people how to be fighter pilots. And my goal was to be able to make enough money to buy a computer, which mm-hmm. was $2,000 at the time. And next thing you know, it was a six figure a year business. Wow. I mean, I mean, honestly, I was getting paid to learn copywriting, marketing, how to send emails, how to communicate with customers, how to deliver on time, how to over deliver, how to get people to write testimonials and, and, and re- get referrals. So I started again. I did another program. My dad is a very famous basketball referee. So okay. he and I created a course for basketball referees that turned into a six figure business still to this day, by the way, we have over 700 people members on a $30 a month membership club. Like it's just wow. the craziest little business. And at that point, uh, I, I would, I was going to these business events. And at that point I was probably making four or $500,000 a year. And people started asking me to come up and speak like, Hey, how did you build these business? How do you get leads? Where do you, you know, where do you get your traffic from? How do you convert people to customers, mm-hmm. copywriting tips and stuff like that. <clears throat> and all of a sudden people started paying me for my advice. Wow. Well, that was kind of surprising. At first, I would, I would, I would be like, just pay for, pay for lunch, <laughs> you know. Then I was like twenty five hundred, five thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty, twenty five thousand. Nowadays, I'm anywhere between say twenty five and seventy thousand for like the kind of consulting that I do. But what I started to realize is people, people really were investing, frankly, in certainty. Yeah. And, and back to the money issue. So right now, things are very uncertain. Yep. So if you are the kind of person who can communicate with certainty. Yeah. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So even if you don't know everything about what's going to happen in the economy, if you can communicate like I just did, which is to say money follows speed, money is attracted to people who, are, who don't hate it, you know, money follows deals, like time kills deals. If you can do deals, money follows deals, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And if you approach the next year or two with that level, even that level of certainty, even if you're not totally certain, that's why I say the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, um, you'll do fine. You'll be fine. Because fundamentally, money's like you said, still going to move. People yeah. are going to still transact, and people are going to be looking for places to invest and people to invest in who know where they're going. Yeah, and people want to work with people that provide a great service, and they're willing to pay more for it. the The last podcast I did, uh, we were talking about this very issue, and he said something. He said, "I believe it's easier to create a business and make money right now than ever before." Totally right. And yeah. I and I was thinking about it. I was like, man, I believe that, you believe that, but the world is telling people the exact opposite right now, and they're be- people are believing that. Yeah, they literally believe that. They believe that things are harder right now. But with social media, with the ability to connect with people, it's it's more open than it's ever been. And and so you know, one of the things that people are talking to me about right now is how do I find a way to raise my income? You know, you have so many people that were kind of raised to think a certain way. And there's a lot of people that aren't going to college anymore. Mm-hmm. And and I don't, I, I, that's a, not a bad thing for a lot of people. Yeah. I, did, I barely graduated high school. And you, know, <laughs> you, you and I both know probably tons of millionaires yeah. who are high school dropouts. Yeah. 100%. Um, but they still come, you know, in this culture, they're, they're kind of thinking in a box. 
And unless someone exposes them to thinking outside of that, they the first words out of their mouth when you ask them how they're going to solve their problem is, I can't. <laughs> and so what are you telling people right now that are they're, they're struggling, you yeah. know, they're dealing with inflation. They're in a middle-class job, which uh, worked five years ago. It doesn't work anymore. It may never work again. Who knows what the future holds, but you know, here in Reading, you, you used to be able to own a house, have insurance, have groceries and live a good life on about 60,000 a year. And with current price of homes, like it's not even possible yeah. anymore. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So the first thing, and it, it's great how you asked that question. So if you look, for example, you mentioned how people think and how the media communicates to us. So to put this into context, let's say you took a time machine and you brought back somebody from 250 years ago, mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington. If you brought them into your house, let's say you, let's say you make $40,000 a year. You're, you're lo lower statistically. That's on the lower end of the middle class. Uh, you've got like a, like a one or two bedroom home apartment kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know, a uh, bunch of people all kind of living in the same uh, building separated by walls. That person would walk into your house and believe that you were the richest person that right. they had ever met. All it would take is them looking at your toilet. You see, there's water in there and there's fresh water. And it would be, it, it wouldn't not, not just be amazing to Thomas Jefferson or George Washington. It, they would start calling you a wizard because mm -hmm. the magic that you were able to put fresh water up into the second floor of your house so that you could pee in it. That, <laughs> that's how, that's how unbelievably yeah. wealthy they yeah. would think that you were. So without any equivocation, I can tell you, we live in the most prosperous time in human history. Yeah. Like people used to, we can eat bananas in the winter. Like if you want to eat bananas 250 years ago, you had to go to the place where there was bananas on the tree at the time of the year when the bananas yeah. were on the tree. Like nowadays, you can have bananas in the winter. So we have the most prosperous, we have the most unbelievable abundant world that we live in, even now yeah. with all the economic hardships that that we that we that we're under right now. And somehow the media is selling us this idea that we're just running out of everything. We're victims. We're, we're, I'm gonna more overpopulating yeah. things. I mean, I had I have I have four kids, right? I had this person, they were like, How many kids do you have? And I said, I had four, and she goes, don't you understand like the world? What are you thinking? The world's like overpopulated. I said, have you taken a flight from California to Pennsylvania recently? Because I did. And I looked outside most of the time. There's nothing there. We're nowhere close to overpopulation. Yep. And it's fundamentally, that's based on the lie that the more people there are, the less resources. Right. But what's true, especially in an entrepreneurial world, and we live in an entrepreneurial world, the more people actually means more resources because humans Check, check this. Humans are the only creature who create more than we consume. When an mm -hmm. entrepreneur is being an entrepreneur, they simply create more pies. Yeah. And so the first thing, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're going to be in business, or frankly, if you want money, period, the first thing you need to do is embrace abundance. Mm -hmm. You can't have a scarcity mindset and make money at the same time. I'll tell you why this is so important. When I was growing up, I was told there's a pie. And if you take, you probably taught this too, if you take more of the pie, someone else will have less. Yep. Well, look, I don't want to be a jerk. I don't want to eat the whole pie. So by virtue of that, I will I will push money away yep. if I believe in the pie principle. Right. But if you understand that entrepreneurs constantly create more pies, yep. we have more money in circulation now than ever in human history. We have more bananas in circulation now than ever in human history. We've got more abundance. Everyone has access for the most part to fresh water, at least here in the United States. Yep. We have so much more, and yet we're being told that we live under scarcity. So the first step is that. And by the way, if that means turning off the news, pr turn off the news. Like I That's go a good start. years, literally I will go, I will go a long periods of time without even paying attention to the news. Yep. If you want to know what's happening, people will tell you. If it's important. You know, the other day we had the, I don't know when you're watching this, but like there was a submarine that imploded, you know, like oh, three yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was off, I was off the news for like a month. You know, my wife came to me and she's like, did you hear about the submarine? And I'm like, what submarine are you talking about? <laughs> She's like, well, the submarine imploded. And I'm like, gosh, that's that's too bad. Anything else? She's like, that's that's all. You know? And, and literally, like, I saved, like, seven days. Because the news apparently went crazy. Like, oh, what we don't, it, can't find them. And then thing. we found them. Yep. And then, like, well, it was like... I went seven days of worrying. It, it took me th 13 seconds to have the whole news story. Yeah. So, so number one is avoid, uh, you know, get abund an abundance mindset, yeah. avoid sort of the news and the media. And then the second thing is move fast in the direction that you feel you're called to, because I keep saying this, but money follows speed. If you're willing to implement, adapt and overcome, 
if you're willing to make a million mistakes, you're going to find it eventually. Yep. Like the mortgage guys that you knew who were very successful. First of all, if I was hiring, if I'm, if I'm looking for a mortgage person, I, I'm education may be the last thing I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes the higher the degree, and by the way, no offense to you if you have a doctorate or whatever, sometimes the higher the, the, the degree, the harder it is for that person to get out of their own way. Totally. You know? And so, uh, so if I'm hiring a mortgage guy, I'm hiring someone who I know, like, and trust who can get me the loan for my house at a great rate. Yep. Everything else is is nearly insignificant for yep. me. And you know as well as I do, the guys that can communicate that effectively are the ones that are going to get deals. Always. Yep. No, that's really good. That abundance mindset. And I was just thinking the word gratitude is so synonymous because when we were doing mission trips, my wife and I, a long time back, we haven't gone to Africa for a while. I, you know, I hadn't been exposed to the type of poverty and most people haven't, yeah. you know, most people here, they have no idea how the rest of the world lives. And, and, and that was hard to see, you know, being over there, but it was so good for me because I saw how important fresh water was. I saw how happy people are, are with nothing, with literally nothing. And then we visited the hospital and I mean, it was it was the craziest thing I ever saw. I mean, it's just so unsanitary and, you know, a line going around the block with people that were sick and most of them were not going to get help. And, you know, so you see th- things like that and I'm sure you've experienced those things being in the military and you see what the rest of the world lives like. And you look at an economy like this and you just see it differently. And I think that's so important that people, they change their perspective and they, they find whatever they can to do that. So, so you said, you know, speed, Speed of implementation. I mean, yep. that's what I heard you say. Yep. I and mean, that's a business principle. You yeah. hear it all the time. It's, yeah, it's fighter pilot principle too. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, the faster you go, the harder it is for the enemy to find you, the easier it is to get to the target. You know, like there's a lot of good reasons wow, to go 600 miles an hour. Yeah. Cause, and I never made that connection because I haven't talked to a fighter pilot before, but we talk about it all the time. I mean, one of the number one things for a business person to succeed faster than anyone is speed of implementation. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Yeah, so, so I have a principle that goes like this. Ready, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim. So most business owners, especially if you're if they're starting a business, especially if they have like two doctorates, and especially if those two doctorates are from Ivy League schools, this is the way they do it. They're like, ready, aim, aim. Yeah. F- do another focus group. Ask my family what they think. And fundamentally, the market is always changing. Yep. So the most important thing you can do, like, for example, if you've got a message for, for the market marketplace, let's say you want to sell a, a product for people who, who want to be a fighter pilot. Mm-hmm. Well, the fast way to do it is to create the product, put it out in the marketplace in its in its 60 to 95% completion state. Mm-hmm. And then just see what people say yep. and see what people do. See the questions that they ask. Hey, does this work for me if I'm going to go to the Navy? Oh, shoot, I, put, I should put that on the sales page. Hey, what about a guarantee? You got to be, oh, I should probably put that on. The, so e- people will give you all the answers in the buying process. Yep. The people that won't give you the answers, are like if you show it to your family, they'll be like, oh, that's that's really great. Or you, you show it to their friends, they'll be like, oh, good job. You did a really good job of that. <laughs> if you show it to the marketplace, if they don't buy it, they don't like it. Yep. And if they do... They do. And so the fastest way to learn, the, the most important votes in your business, write this down, the most important votes in your business are are attached with credit cards and checks. Mm-hmm. So if someone says yes, that means your marketing was effective. If yep. someone says no, that means it wasn't. And if they ask a question, it's the b- most blessed thing that someone can do. Yep. So in sales, of course, we call these objections. Yep. But someone says, well, what if it doesn't work? What if you can't get me the loan? Well, I tried this before. And what if I don't get qualified? Those are called objections. Salespeople call those objections. They're really questions, right? Yep. So in sales, I don't know why we use the term objection because they don't, they're not like, I object, you know? No. They're just like, hey, so, you know, I tried to get a loan before and it didn't work. That's a question. And the questions are the most golden blessings that God can deliver to you because what it means is there's a hole someplace in your communication. Mm-hmm. And when they ask the question, especially if you're able to put that as a part of your communication and a part of your persuasion, you'll make more money. That's why the rule is ready, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim. And so most business owners feel like, oh gosh, I failed. No, you just found like one way that doesn't work. And I, I say this all the time. I mean, I already said it once, like most of my business successes came on the heels of two, three, four, five, six, seven different failures. Yep. And, and so what happens is, if I could just use this analogy, uh, in an F-18, which is what I flew, the Sidewinder missile comes off of the wingtips. It's a missile that hits off supersonic. It can, it's a short-range missile, say two to four miles. 
Those are the not, not confidential. Those are the, you can hear those numbers. Uh, highly maneuverable mm-hmm. type of weapon system. So what happens is you'll lock your aim nine onto the target. You'll get a tone in your ear that tells you that you're locked. Then you squeeze the trigger. The missile, by its design, will spend the first hundred to four hundred meters flying perfectly straight. Not a single missile that comes off an airplane will begin turning right away. It, they never do. Okay. And the reason for that is because we sell, we buy uh, missiles from the lowest bidder. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't shoot ourselves. Okay. Yep. So it goes straight for a little while because the last thing you want is the thing coming back at you, yep. uh, which it will, by the way, if it's not, you know, if it's not takes its time to go off. So it'll go to 100 to 200 meters and then it'll start to turn. During that time, so you're on an airplane that's flying 450 miles an hour. You're probably shooting an airplane that's going 450 miles an hour. You're pulling two Gs. They're pulling four Gs. There's a lot of dynamic things that are happening in that period of time. What I can tell you is when the missile starts tracking, the airplane is not where it thinks it is. And so it'll simply make a correction. Okay. Missiles by design are designed to always correct past the target. So if they're correcting towards the target, they won't stop on the target. They actually correct past, then make another correction back. And a Sidewinder missile is named that because it's, it actually turns like that, making smaller and smaller okay. corrections to the target as it comes. It's just making these little corrections. So an entrepreneur, a business owner, a prosperity-minded person will start off towards their goal. They want to write a book. They want to start a business. They want to make more money. They want to invest wisely. You want to you know, create more abundance for your family, start an Airbnb business, whatever. Start down the road. And and a person almost always will hit an obstacle because mm-hmm. that's a uh, life and business and like really what it is yeah. is a, it's a weeding out process yep. you know because the harder it is for you the harder it is going to be for everyone else so you might as well embrace it so most people hit a wall and a failure minded person will hit that wall and go ah oh, you know see it didn't work ah uh, you know like my aunt was right I ne- I'll never be successful and then they stop and then they invent something new hit another wall and they basically have a constant pattern of that of that happening. A success-minded person will go, oh, I just hit something, and then you make a left-hand turn. Mm -hmm. But you're still not going towards the target, and then you hit something else, you make a right-hand turn, then you hit something else, you make a left-hand turn, and next thing you know, success starts to come your way. And you look backwards, and you see this huge zigzag, you know? And your wife, like my wife once said to me, she's like, why are you always changing your mind? And I'm like, I haven't even made my mind up yet. (laughs) I haven't even made it up yet. I'm still talking about it, you know? (laughs) But the point is, if you look at any successful person, by the way, when they write magazine yeah. articles in entrepreneur magazine they always make it sound like you know overnight here at success. abc corp we were always invested in <laughs> yeah. our people no you weren't you were trying yeah. to make your sale at three yeah. o'clock in the morning like like you were trying to make yeah. money you know so they always make it set i call that uh, revisionist history right so they always oh you know and then we knew the target you didn't know your target audience you figured that out three years later but like my point is they never tell you about all of the big dumb mistakes that they made on purpose but that's business and frankly that's life that's parenting that's fitness that's dieting that's relationships it's everything it's everything bang 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 running up against things and if you can score one success for every 10 failures man count yourself in the blessed view yeah because that's that's what it is and that's yeah. what business is you know yeah yeah and, and you know this as well as i do most people that have started a business a side hustle that's become something uh, once they become successful the process of what they learned is more important than what they what the result of it was big time you know, we talk yeah. about it all the time i mean, I know several people that became incredibly successful, you know, high net worth. And for whatever reasons, a lawsuit, a partnership failing, a divorce, um, they lost their net worth, but they made it back in a half the time or to- less totally. because of what yeah. they learned along the way. I have some friends of mine. So there's a couple of things I'll tell you. So first of all, uh, I have some friends of mine who have gone bankrupt. Okay. And they will tell you it's the best thing that ever happened to me because yep. they're they're like, I'm not afraid of it anymore. Yep. I know what happened. I know that was hard. And then they made it through it. And that's not a fear for them. And it is a fear for a lot of people. It is. I also know people who've been audited by the IRS. I don't know if you've ever been audited before. I not certainly yet. have. You go through it. You get all those letters. You go through it. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. But then you get done. You're like, oh, that wasn't actually as bad yep. as I thought it was. I used to be afraid of that. Yep. And so sometimes the horrible thing that you are terrified of happening is like the best thing that could possibly happen to you. As long as you have that success mind yeah. where you're like, hey, like the way I, I operate, because I speak I speak a lot and I write books, um, you know, and I do a lot of consulting, but I'm in front of audiences a lot, do a lot of interviews. And so my rule is if it's going to be funny later, it's funny now, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yes. so like I've been, I've tripped onto stages before I walked onto two stages with my zipper down, like not on purpose. Uh, I've made some really huge mistakes. I said some really dumb things. I mean, I communicate for a living. Like I didn't yeah. mean to, I just said it, but I think to myself, wow, that's going to be like a really great yep. story later on. So as long as you're willing to have like a nice humorous, uh, 
approach to life and understand like it's a long story man when you're like 80 you're gonna think it's all funny you just and, can't take it too serious <laughs> i mean you just gotta and just or just ask god. sometimes you just have, have to ask god like what lesson am i supposed to learn here? yeah i was going through a really tough time years and years ago financially and I, I remember just praying one day and just saying god whatever lesson you're trying to teach me help me to be a fast learner you know, if it's supposed to take seven years for me to learn this lesson, can it just take seven weeks? Because mm -hmm. I would just rather learn yep. your lesson faster so we can get onto the prosperity part. <laughs> so, so yeah, learn fast, ready, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, implement fast. And I keep saying this, but money follows speed. If you, if you continue, you will be successful. Mm -hmm. You will. Yep. It is guaranteed. It just is. don't give up. Get good advice. I mean, Sometimes people are doing businesses that will never be successful in a million years, doesn't matter what. And they're like, you know, I'm following my passion. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, no one's going to pay you to sit in your couch and watch football, you know, mm -hmm. and eat potato chips. Like maybe you should create a service that, that helps people, yep. you know, at the very least blog about it or something. So there are some things that just won't create wealth no matter what. Get advice, go to mm -hmm. business events, you know, ask people. But fundamentally, if you're solving a problem, which is really what business is, actually every currency exchange is a is a solution to a problem, mm -hmm. you know. And if you're solving a problem, you make money. Yeah, you're, you're going to guaranteed. Tell me about God talks. So yeah, thanks for bringing this. By the way, that's yours. Man. Um, I appreciate this, man. This is and you have Brian Tracy. <laughs> as a, I, first thing I do when I read books, I usually look and see what people have to say. And I saw Brian Tracy's name in there, and he's a big name in my industry, the real estate industry, pretty much all sales. So that's tell me, a little, how do you know him? So Brian and Brian's uh, testimonial, he said, if you'll read only one book this year, read this one. So uh, Brian is a friend of mine. He's also a client. So I, I've done uh, two, I think now, or maybe it's three, three consulting deals for Brian. So the first time I ever did consulting for Brian, Brian was almost 70 years old. I was 39. And uh, I, I knew his marketing director fairly well. I was pretty good at this point. I, I do a lot of speaking. So I was pretty good on stage at, Offering products or services from the stage in a not salesy way. So you, mm -hmm. you've probably been to events before where someone sounds like a used car salesman. I was able to communicate fairly effectively without, uh, you know, seamlessly as a part of stories and stuff. And Brian wanted to learn how to do sales better from the stage. Mm -hmm. So he hired me. And I went and did a coaching day with Brian Tracy where he was asking for my advice and I, I like walked in and I'm like, man, I hope this guy doesn't like kick me out in like the first 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> there might be some mistake so, here. Brian. I, like, hey, I don't, I don't know, know who you, you think I am. You but. Know, like, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to give you some ideas here. Um, so, you know, I'm in the conference room. It's like this, this like big, like 16 person table. And I'm sitting there all by myself, you know, I've got my little notepad in front of me. Not even sure how, what we're going to do for, for the, for the beginning of this thing. And Brian comes walking in. If you know Brian, Brian doesn't come walking in alone. He's got like four assistants yep. that come He's in behind him. You know, so all the assistants come in and sits down. So he sits across from me. Ed, we want to learn how to, to it was a product. He wanted it. He had this $10,000 product that they wanted to sell at their next event. And um, he wanted to learn how to do it better. So I started teaching him some stuff. And at one point I said, Brian, I want you to find your best student. Mm -hmm. And I said, when you find your best student, I don't want like a, I don't want somebody who's got millionaire written all over him. I want somebody who, who struggled, mm -hmm. a normal person, but they were successful with your speaking system. And I want you to bring them up on stage. And I want you to ask him these four questions. And I told him the questions, ask him this question, this question, this question, this question. I want this person to answer honestly. When you ask these four questions, it sets up the sale perfectly. It shows a transformation. It gives the audience an idea of the person's success. And it all credits back to the program. And as I said, the four questions, his assistant, uh, said, Hey, Brian, or assistant said, Ed, would you mind emailing us those questions so that Brian, and he goes, Felicia, Ed doesn't need to eat. He, he, he goes, <laughs> Felicia, Ed's a very busy guy. He doesn't need to email him. I got it. He's like, I got it. He's wow. writing it down. Right. And I was like, that's awesome. And in that moment I was thinking, I wonder if I would be so humble. Like when I was 70 and I was Brian Tracy, mm -hmm. I wonder if I would be so humble as to receive advice from a 39 year old punk fighter pilot kid. So, but he did it. Like he wrote it down. Two weeks later, I'm at his event and I'm watching Brian Tracy up on stage and he's like, first question, boom. Second question, boom. He's like delivering Crushed the thing. it. He does the whole offer. They make $260,000, right? Back in the back table from the thing I taught him. And I got a piece of that, by the way, just so you know, I'm cutting into the, <laughs> I got a pot, part of that pie. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I'm like, man, that is just like, that was sort of like one of my life life highlights. But the point there is, if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, career-minded person, you have a vision. Look, Brian Tracy is a better speaker than me. 
has always been. Brian Tracy charges more still for his his talks than mm-hmm. I do. He's a legend in the legend. in the speaking world, yep. and yet he was still willing to get speaking advice from someone who is not clearly not as good as him. And I'm like, you know what? That's a guy who just looking for an advantage. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's say over the eight hours I spent with him, there was only one one good idea. There was more than one good idea. But I'm saying, let's say there was just one. Yeah. Brian Tracy's smart enough to know, hey, I'm willing to pay this guy for that one one idea right and so that's my encouragement to you as you're watching which is it's not about like if let's say you listen to someone online or you're watching this 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 uh interview and you agree with you know 80 percent of it well most people you know have to follow this is part of the american political landscape too most people believe they have to agree with you 100 percent like 10% 10% of what I taught you today on this podcast is wrong. It's just the problem is we don't know what 10% it is. You know, <laughs> I'm sure six years from now, I'll be like, I can't believe I said that one yep. thing. But the point is, you don't have to accept all of it. The idea is, can you walk away from a show like this with one new idea, yep. one idea for implementation? So the the book, God Talks, is my sixth book. I've developed this process about uh, for asking God questions about my business and getting answers. Mm-hmm. My philosophy is wisdom for business is important, but the most important wisdom you can get is divine wisdom. Just so you know, um, I've had atheists, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, Christians, skeptics, and everyone in between read this book. Uh, It's not written from a denominational standpoint. It's written for regular folks like us. Mm -hmm. I do business events. I'm not like us, like a, I don't do like church things or anything like that. I, I work, I work with entrepreneurs. The idea is the book is designed so that anyone, and you'll read a story in there about an atheist at one of my events, literally, literally this atheist woman, I did this exercise at one of my events. She walked up to me with uh, like one of those yellow pads of paper. Yep. And she's like, um, I have two pages of notes from God and I'm an atheist. How does that work? And I was like, I mean, maybe you could tell me how that works. Cause I mean, that's kind of more like your question than my question. It is. So I'm just saying this is very accessible and it takes you through a process of asking God questions about your business and getting answers. Embedded in the book is a discussion about how to recode your mind, literally how to physically rewire your brain. So if money's been an issue for you, if relationships, if the body stuff, whatever has been a problem, it teaches you how to recode that. Um, and uh, it's fun. There's a lot of fighter pilot stories. It's a it's a slightly irreverent, sorry, very irreverent, um, very fun journey on a conversation with God. And if you don't laugh by the third chapter, you can send it back. <laughs> so, <yeah>. well. <laughs> No, you know, I I think it's important. We we talk about people's mindset right now. And, you know, this podcast, I I posted something today. In fact, Fab was was there about two years ago. A bunch of us went on a shooting school. There was a bunch of business guys, pastors there. and Like shooting guns and stuff, yeah? Long range in Wyoming. We're talking the same language. language Thousand yard shots. Even Fab hit one at a thousand yard, believe it or not. If you're like, have a problem with that, you can just pause fast forward two minutes because this we're going down this road right now I like well there's this. a lot of guys that were there that <laughs> never had shot a gun before yeah. but what was interesting about this place they is became men that weekend well they? So, <laughs> some of them did some of them, some of them are still working on it but we were all smoking cigars talking about god goofing around being 12 year olds teasing each other shooting guns and and these are amazing guys. Like it's some of the most incredible guys in the world that were there. Just some of the most incredible character, love, but but fun. And I just remember thinking to myself, man, p- the world needs to hear these conversations. And, and and it was kind of one of the reasons why I'm here today. And so you know, in this podcast, we we do talk about money, and we talk about you know. I told you someone dropped an f bomb a few episodes yeah. ago. But oh, the, I the one thing I was supposed to do that. Sorry. Oh, we, we still squeeze it in. It. We, it's a short, <laughs> short word. Yeah. We can say it later. But the, uh, the thing that I think I want people to know is when it comes to fear, like I don't make any, I don't make an excuse. Like having a relation with God. I mean, that is the number one thing I think for so many people. So I love your title, God talks, <laughs> because I have a lot of friends that don't necessarily have a relation with God. And, and I never try to, they're my friends. I love them. I don't, it, there's no agenda, but I always tell them, I was like, Hey man, this is my secret. Like I should not be here today. And if you really want to know, like, this is it. So yeah. I, I love your title, man. That's, that's really cool. I have, um, I have a um, guy who attends my events who, um, I, don't, I don't know how to describe this other than to say his lifestyle is one of the most extreme lifestyles. I will just, I'll just leave it at that. Bottom line is he and I are very different. I mean, I have four kids and like, so at a family, you know, but he, he called me the other day and he's like, you're, you talk about God, like the most normal, 
Like it's just like this normal everyday thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, cause it's like this normal everyday thing. It is. And the issue is, so like religion, religious people made the topic of God really weird mm -hmm. when it shouldn't have been really weird. You should be able to walk outside and look at the rain or the trees and be like, man, God is awesome. That yeah. is really great. And everyone that I know, just so you know, as you're watching this, everyone that I know that considers themselves an atheist and most of the folks who consider themselves agnostic in one way or another have been hurt by church people yeah. or by the church. And a lot of that has to do with inauthenticity. Mm -hmm. um, the person that you're listening to now is a, is who I am. The person that you're listening to, Chris, is who he is. We, we've made a million mistakes. Some of those I can tell you about. Some of them I, I can't. It's been a fun ride, though. I'll tell oh, you that yeah. much. Lots of um, <laughs> and, and you tell very transparently your story, frankly, of your past yeah. and yep. of addiction and that sort of thing. And so the, the bottom line is, you know, we've all made a lot of mistakes. And so when I talk about God, I'm talking about my partner. I'm talking about yeah. my friend. Uh, I'm talking about a person that I have a conversation with on a daily basis without condemnation, without weird, that weird guilt, yeah. guilt manipulation. Uh, and what the result of that is, is freedom. Mm. So if you have, for example, a religious background or a church background where that word freedom wasn't there, you weren't actually experiencing the God that mm -hmm. were just, that were the true, the yeah. one, one true God. Yeah. Uh, and I know that it's hard, especially in today's day and age, and especially with, you know, like YouTube, <laughs> not to find stuff like that. But if you just want some authenticity, give it a shot. And I always tell people, it's just, I'm just teaching you to start the conversation. My job is to make an introduction and let it rip. So if you have never had a conversation with God, try to like, try it, yeah. you know? And if you have, but maybe it's dwindled or it's been hard for you or life's been difficult, give it a shot again. Cause yeah. you never know. My experience is God's always speaking. It's just, we don't really listen very well. And really right. fundamentally what I teach people to do is listen. It's, tuned it's true. Yeah. I had a guy that I was coaching uh, last year. He had cancer. He was broke. He just got married and he was struggling and he finally got to this place. Like, what do I do? And I said, man, I, I, I'm, you need to pray. Said, well, how do I pray? I said, well, wake up in the morning and say, help me. <laughs> yeah, when, you I like that. To, when you go to bed, say, thank you. <laughs> that's, I said, just do that great. for 30 I like, days. I love it. I love it. I love he's it. like, that's simple? So, yeah. yeah, that's simple. Start there. That's and he called me advice. 30 days later, he, and it, it literally changed his life. I still hear from him today. He doesn't have cancer anymore. He's doing great. You should write a book about that, man. That's good. I like this. Just, like, well, I think we overcomplicate it. Religion overcomplicates yeah. it. It puts all these, and it's just like, you know, I found God high on drugs and alcohol, driving on a spend. You were lot. high or God was high? Or oh, I, he, he, you he, were high, and then high. you found God. Okay. I was right. high and all drunk. Right. <laughs> and I wasn't in church. You know, I definitely was not righteous, and I found him in, in the lowest point of my life. So I found freedom, you know, you just, the, the word freedom, it means so much to me Yeah, because that's all I've ever known, you know, since I found them. So, well, Ed, I so appreciate you being here, man. I think this is going to be a super valuable podcast for people to hear. Um, if someone wants to find your book, where can they find it? Yeah. So the website is godtalks.com. So G-O-D-T-A-L-K-S, basically like the easiest website you could ever remember. So if you're like on the Stairmaster right now, just remember godtalks.com. That's By the a way, heck of a URL. When you get there, yeah, yes. The moment I, in the middle of writing the book, it had a different title. By the way, um, in the middle of writing the book, I started calling these exercises God talks. Like, just sit down mm -hmm. and have a God talk. Just sit down and have a God talk. Because uh, I, I just realized the word prayer is awesome. But number one, everyone's when there's a national tragedy, everyone says pray for some someone or something, and and sometimes people get offended when you use that word. So I was like, just have a God talk. Just have mm -hmm. a God talk. In the middle of it, I told my assistant, I'm like, go buy that domain. <laughs> so we got the domain, godtalks.com. You can go there. By the way, when you go there, I created a set of exercises. They're, they're audios. So the so there's seven God Talks that I recommend that you have asking God questions about certain topics. All you got to do is put your headphones on, push play, and you can do the exercise. Those are free? Those are free. You got to go to the cool. website because okay. they're on the website. Cool. But, but when you go to God Talks, most of the people that I know um, who read the book will do the exercises audibly instead of... Because it just leads you through. There's a little background music. Mm -hmm. My voice is like, here, ask this question. Nice. So, um, but yeah, it's it's fun. I've had I've had thousands of people go through that. It's really a good time. So, GodTalks.com. That's the one. GodTalks.com. Thanks, man. Appreciate Thank you, you having me. Appreciate you. Yeah. Please make sure to like it and subscribe. We'd love you to ask questions and leave a comment. And Ed, thanks so much. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you. Honored to be here, man. Thank you.